photographs of Johnny Vinnie. Well, I'll go. Okay, can we make a start? Yeah. Hold up. Are you ready? Hello, and welcome um, to the meeting of the Tampa Motion Committee. Um, we have apologies from Councillors Hetherington, Rosecki, um, Huxley, Linda and Stuart Piper, and Tony, whose surname has completely Tony escaped Knight. me, Knight. <laughs> Any other apologies? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, any declarations of interest? <laughs> dodgy subject, dodgy <laughs> subject there, dodgy subject. No. Think swiftly on. No, oh, I'm planning to declare an interest. <clears throat> oh, because oh, I'm a member of Ramsgate Town. Um, those of us who are members of the town team committee will need to declare an interest in the town team item. So that's Pat and uh, Becky and me. Okay. And back. <laughs> okay. okay, minutes of the last meeting held on the 27th of May. Can I take it that everybody has read, marked, learned, inwardly digested all the people stuff? Yeah. Are they a true record? Yeah. Any amendments? I propose the minutes acceptable, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Robin. Second it. I'll second it. Thank you, Councillor Ara. All in favour? Agreed, Chair. Agreed. Thank you. Any matters arising not on the agenda? Okay. So we're delighted to have Theresa and Jess with us to talk us through their Ridesdale project. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dean, for getting all this set up for us as well. So let's just get on. I'll have a little running. So I think everybody in the room knows who we've got for the minutes. Uh, my name is Theresa Smith, and I'm from an arts practice called Mooch, which is based in Townscape and has been working on public art uh, projects um, here in the town since 2014. And I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the latest project that we've been doing. But first, I'd like to introduce Jessica Clements, who has been working with, working with Mooch for six months by the Kickstarter project, and she's been working specifically on the rise of the project, developing her work experience and expanding her creative practice. And so the idea of Kickstarter is you then go on to, uh, to, to the next stage in your career. And she's been a very welcome addition to the Mooch team and an invaluable asset in this project. So thank you to Jess for stopping us. Also, we have brought some materials with us, which we were intending to hand out, but of course, uh, given the current climate, we, we shan't be handing them out. But please do take um, Ramsgate recorded with an article about uh, the project and also importantly there's um, a printout of uh, uh, an essay by Dan Thompson who's been a consultant on the project so we won't have to try and detail of that today but please take it away with you. So, the latest project, the Isle of Risegate. Now this project was commissioned by Historic England as part of the High Street Heritage Action Zone um, cultural programme about which you know and I won't go into the detail of that. Um, Specifically, this is Twin Towns Commission, and they had six commissions around the country, around England, that were linking two um, High Street Heritage Action Zones. I think there are about 60 of them, if my memory serves me right. <coughs> and Mooch was lucky enough to win one of those commissions. So we brought that money to Ramsgate. <coughs> and I decided to twin Ramsgate and ride on the Isle of Wight. Let me see if this is working okay. And part of the inspiration behind this was the, um, the Ramsgate Model Village, which every time it popped up on Facebook, really got everybody sort of, you know, really nostalgic and, and, and so many lovely comments about it. I thought, yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And it's a shame we can't have a little bit of it back. So, the uh, first sort of historic was to develop our model high street. So, this was the original title of the project. And I did a visual of it in the Peacocks building. And so, the original idea was to have a COVID friendly sort of remote exhibition in the town centre animating what was possibly going to be an empty shop, it wasn't clear at that point. But um, all that's said in that, and these question marks were the model buildings that are going to go onto our model high school, yet to be designed and decorated by members of the public. So the idea was to have a sort of safe, remote uh, a project that engaged people in a craft activity that highlighted the heritage and um, action zone uh, aspirations, and also bigged up Ramsgate and Pride. 
So the first stage, so apologise for voices this nearly as picture. This was the best picture that we gave you from Broadstairs College. Stage one was to do a, uh, a Zoom presentation, which was absolutely terrifying, uh, with the art students of Broadstairs College. Okay, so that was the first stage. We were engaging them in two things. Telling them about the high streets and the importance and the cultural value of them, and um, also instructing them on what to do to start to make the templates that we needed for our model high street. And so the person you see with me there on the presentation is Dan Thompson, who has written this essay here. And he is an artist and writer based in Margate, and also the founder of the Empty Shops Network. And so he's an expert on, on, on uh, how to uh, rewild the high street, as he calls it. So that was the first stage. We went on from there to get students to actually look at the high street and the beauty that we have in the detail of the architecture. And so, and in fact, Argos was a particular favourite. We had several of them doing the Argos building because they just, they just uh, you know, and, and I know a lot of people are big fans of this, of architecture. And so they went on to get, this is one of the students' drawings, their impression of, of, this, uh, of this space. And of course, what you do then is you, you take it down to the sort of bare essentials and the outlines and the detail of, of, of the um, facades. Um, but we also went beyond just being involved with the, um, the students. We were contacted via our Facebook posts by um, a model maker who then went on to create this CAD drawing of 25 and 27 on um, High Street because uh, he just wanted to get involved because he liked it and was, was keen. So again, it's all about zoning in on, on what we've got here and starting to look at it and appreciate it. And so our models built and built and we had um, a, a, a sort of stable of different facades from Ramsgate and Drive. And here we have the Salvation Army in Ryan High Street and this is the building that's next door to the post office in, in our high street here in Ramsgate. And in fact, that's the building in which we had our, um, our exhibition at MUCC. This is the fairly sort of shabby looking empty shop. And at this stage, I want to say a special thank you to Rebecca, because without her, we wouldn't have got this shop. Yeah, we yeah. struggled for months to try and secure. How many shops did we try? 20, I think it was. In the end. Yeah, in the end, and, and in the end, it was Rebecca that helped us to get this. So, huge thank you to you. And so, we had this lovely big space to fill. And right in the middle, of the, in, in, inside the red line of the HS hands, so a good location. And so we started to build the brand of the uh, project as well, and employing other local creatives, so spreading the money and you know, spreading the, um, the influence. This was designed by Cabal Rafferty, who's an illustrator based over in uh, Edinburgh Market. And so we had our island of Ricegate, because then the whole project transitioned from being twin towns <coughs> to creating this best of both worlds. So Ramsgate and Ride became the Isle of Ridescape. And it became a bit of a sort of cool mood because it became a, a, a leap of imagination rather than just looking at your individual towns and being competitive between the two. And so, oh, that's... <laughs> anyway, that is um, the craft packs. And this was what we handed out to people and posted out to people all over the place, um, not just locally, but all around the country and over to the Isle of, Isle of Wight as well. We printed, I think, 200 um, model template kits in the first week, and then we had to print another 200 because they just flew out the door. So, thank you very much to uh, the town council as well for letting us distribute um, the, the craft packs from there. And then we posted back to us with people's ideas. And inside, we've got information about the project and uh, just a sort of you know, a vibrant, buzzy, kind of fun, and quite sort of nostalgic uh, aesthetic to it as well. And beyond that, beyond the models, we need to have somewhere to display them. And so this was the, the initial brief that I sent out to illustrator in, um, based here in Ramsgate, Patrick George, also known as Peter Scott. And he came up with this beautiful map. And what we have here is a mixture of both worlds. And so we've got name, place names from, um, from, from uh, Ramsgate and Ride, and sort of details. You can see obviously our harbour arm, and there's uh, over in Ride with the uh, railway going to the end. Good long sands and it's fantastic flotilla of Oka buzzing around, serving our little island, our little place of joy. And so <coughs> this was then printed and displayed. And thank you very much to Ramsgate Town Council for um, the funds that they gave us in order to really, you know, amp up the, 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 the presentation that we, could, that we could do. And we, you know, that that print uh, fund made all the difference to the quality of what we were presenting, including the facade of the building. So we transformed this sort of dead space and this dull space into something that's really buzzy and attractive and invited people to come in and participate in what at this stage was 
an open door and a participatory activity because the COVID restrictions uh, were relaxed and we were able to do that. And so over three weeks we were open for 11 days and we specifically timed it so that it, it overlapped with the school closure time so that students could, could drop in after school as well. And at the time that it was closed, you could still look through the portal in the, um, uh, in the window and see the, the models and the map inside. And so these are examples of two of them. We're still waiting for the other ones to be posted back from Ride. But uh, this is just a little flavour of the kind of creative efforts that people went to, which is just amazing. And so this is our soft opening on the first day. As you see, there's just a few post-it comments and just a few buildings um, at that stage. But this lady here originally came from Ryan, but she and her husband retired to Ramsgate. And she was, uh, and we secretly elected her the mayor of Ryan's. <laughs> <laughs> she was a daffling, absolute darling, really lovely and helpful. And she helped create this, what connects our twin towns. And so there are a number of themes that, that, um, that, that I had already sort of identified, but she helped to expand them. I mean, we didn't shy away from things like um, policing issues and social issues. And, you know, things like faded grandeur, but, you know, historic abbeys, quirky buildings, uh, island identity, identity and Hofcraft services. And so there were so many things that made these two towns a good match. <coughs> and so we went on to further um, uh, engage with the work experience programme over at Broadhurst College. And in total, we had 14 students that, that came and, and worked with us. And they came and helped make models and, and draw more, um, uh, more templates and basically get involved with what we were doing. But it was all ages as well. And this is Dot, who was the oldest at... 91. 91, thank you. Um, and she, she drew one of our buildings as well. And she reminisced for a long time about how glorious the town centre was when she was a girl. And named some of the buildings and the shops that were favourites and the places she felt were, you know, places of luxury and, and wonder. And so, this is a lovely shop by Ellen Marriott, who I'm sure all of you know from being a, 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 an accomplished and, and renowned local photographer, but also um, a volunteer here at the uh, museum, um, here at the Custom House. But uh, you get a good view of the size of the map from here as well. And this map, um, we managed to attract further investment from historically in England because of this project. And they paid to have the maps printed, <coughs> the maps, on Lino. And so this map is now over at Royal Harbour Academy. And it's going to be used by Historic England as an education tool to teach them about historic high streets and the value of our town centres. So we've expanded it, we've just kept pushing the boundaries and expanding what we could do with this as much as they let us. <laughs> and so as you see, the posters are growing, the, 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 the buildings are growing, the, 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 our little island is filling up. And then some of the creative were just extraordinary. I mean, these are the windows of the Ivy restaurant in London, by the way, everybody, just to let you know. Um. And it's a cocktail bar with cats. So you've heard of cat cafes, but this one's got cocktails as well. <laughs> uh, I mean, the get, it's a very cat-friendly island. <laughs> and each one of them has a little story in the bottom. So we have a, a building of pleasure, leisure, and laughter. And this is a rather beautiful template oh. that was made by Paul Norden. Look at that. That's Lloyd's Bank. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? Somebody walked in and said, oh my god, it looks like Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what, you're right. This is a wonderful <coughs> interpretation of it. <coughs> and another one, um, all green, zero waste for Ridesgate. And so we, need to, we all need to do our bit to save the planet. Um, my idea is to take the information centre to a high level. Most visitors would like to head straight to the information centre. And all sorts of ideas as to what can happen in the visitor information centre at Ridesgate unearthed. Okay, I think, I'm Miss Woolies, I think the decline of it was almost the tipping point of when our high street started to fade away. So there's so many you know, really considered responses and, and quite detailed information. This one has got, um, there's a dog, I think runs this one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, you know, it's run by a hard working dog. Anyway, and so, here we go. Just uh, another. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's okay. okay. So this is a time lapse that was done by the media students over at um, uh, I won't say it's college as well. So they came and they did the stories, which I thought was really kind of them, and it just helps to give a sense of the scale of the map. So what it is that the schools going to be working with, and uh, we tried to sort. This is well into Crescent. We made it all kind of nice and jaunty. <laughs> and. Um, I think that goes much smoother than this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're not that nice on our feet. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah. Next. Does it? Okay. Yep. So this next one. Yep. All right, okay. There you go. Hey. So we packed everything up, and there's quite a lot of it by this stage, and we went over to the Isle of Wight, because we promised that we'd exhibit over there as well. And they still have the only passenger hovercraft service in the world. So another connection with Rome Scotland. Yeah, and I fell in love with the wrong <laughs> I, did, I did a trip on it, it was just brilliant. And so this is the building that we uh, exhibited in over there. It was empty for years, and it um, has just been taken over by Ride Arts and a, com a company called Shademakers, who are a very prestigious uh, carnival company. And so they allowed us to have one of their big windows, right next to a bus stop, right in the town centre, which is terrific, so they've got lots of attention. And the building that it was in was the subject of yet another sort of random connection. Now this demonstrates that the reach of the project wasn't just local or national, but international. This was designed by a Brazilian architect who went to Churchill Language School in 1995, has been following Ramsgate on Facebook ever since, saw our project on Facebook and, and volunteered his services to do something for the project. So he designed this in CAD, and Jess has made this sort of model for us. And so he did the building that we were actually exhibiting in, in Ride. And so we, we, I specifically asked him to thank you to our hosts over on the Isle of Wight for letting us have this space. So here's the interior of that building. This is Paul, who's the creative director. You can see there's a bicycle giraffe sitting behind him. And the, the tigers that are in this, this is the window next to our um, installation. But here we go. There's a, there's a jungle for the tigers there. And here's the island of Ryan's and exit to the Ryan. And we were there for the first day of the opening. It was there for three weeks, as, as was in, um, in uh, Ramsgate. And we uh, welcomed visitors and, and got their feedback as well. And so we're just waiting for other buildings to come back from there. So, as far as town promotion is concerned, we did quite a lot of promoting for this one. Um, this is a list of our press release and media coverage. And obviously we have the, the recent um, article that's come out in Roundsgate Recorder. So we're very, we're very pleased to have that. We also got the BBC um, Dominic King show to do a live um, broadcast from the, the exhibition in the High Street as well. So we really pushed it and uh, we did some fantastic social media. Um, we have any sort of... And, Jess has been the social media guru. So. Uh, any stats that we've got? I mean, it's really pushed up. The... I mean, at the top of my head, um, before I came aboard, the stats for the project, as Trees were so busy, um, luckily because I was there, I was able to help her with that. So I think in total, the project actually reached 20,000 people on Facebook. Um, and we had quite, a, I think we had about 400 interactions, and things like likes, comments, shares. Um, but there was a lot of link clips for Historic England, every link that we was putting on, including, you know, the Ramsgate um, town and groups and things like that. So yeah, I think it went pretty successfully. Yeah, yeah it was brilliant. So each time we were pushing Ramsgate and Ride and getting people to come in, and it, it definitely was working. People were saying, oh, I heard about it on the radio, so therefore I've come to have a, have a look. So, and this is the article that you can see here for you, which I'm sure you've all seen in the recording. And the first line of the article is, uh, the arts can serve Ramsgate. And so I really hope that you feel that this project has, has, has done that, and that we've worked very hard. And, and with the, obviously the increased capacity of having Jess on board has, has really kind of upped the game of what we could do with it as well. So we, we're very pleased with, with, um, with what we've managed so far. And so where do we go from here? Obviously, there are so many subjects that this project touched. We can, maybe we can look at doing a, a project that connects uh, Ramsgate and Ryan via the hot part as well. Because again, that's another one of those kind of points of nostalgia that keeps coming up over and over again on Facebook. And I'm just going to finish off with um, a little slideshow of the post-its that we had on the, um, on the wall behind us. <laughs> but while that's rolling, I just, one of the outcomes of the project that I was particularly happy with well, it's time and time again, the little stories on the bottoms of the, of the models were saying um, we want community centres, we want meeting places, places where we can make friends, places that are creative. And this, was, this happened time and time again. And by the end of the three weeks and our 11 days of being open in Ramsgate, we found that um, uh, we were getting return visits from people. And there were particularly two girls who had been participating in the uh, education department's activities because they printed loads more than we'd, we'd printed and distributed them to schools around Ramsgate. So the whole project really expanded with the education department's assistance. And they made models, they came to see the exhibition. And then they gave this birthday card to the models on our birthday. And lollies. They brought us presents. Yeah. And then they, 
it was it was just a space that I think they felt safe in. They felt comfortable to come back, and even though they weren't participating again because they had already done their drawings, they were quite happy just to sit and chat and chat to people that were also coming in as well. Um, so I just think that's quite important to highlight. So we, I mean, we'd kind of inadvertently met one of the needs of the project, and we felt it was it was something that we'd be interested to do would be to uh, do a, another new version of that because we clearly met a need. We, we, we had this cool drop in space, we could have a craft activity where young people felt safe just to hang out. So um, with that last <coughs> message, I just wanted anybody... Have yeah, can I ask, did you get planning permission and where's your 30 days? <laughs> where is it? Temporary installation, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I mean, you, you grab from there is an indirect. indirect uh, uh, it's not a direct benefit of your project, but the indirect benefits are really important, and you should add those in. And they're probably magnified more than you've identified, because that's what we find in Charlton that there is sometimes a tenfold effect on your direct impacts and your indirect impacts. Uh, so it's definitely worth building that in and trying to identify more. Yeah, well, we're obviously, I mean, we just have to, oh, my throat's been sore trying to get this down to some 15 minutes today. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, I mean, there's, there's so much we, we could sort of detail. I mean, obviously, what we need to do when the uh, models come back is actually quantify the, 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 the subject types of what people are after. So this, this many people wanted to have this type of, um, uh, of, of space. You know, there's there's the commercial, there's the community, there's the um, you know, the, just, or the creative or whatever. We need to still quantify what those things are mm. and come up with a report. We had a discussion with Historic England last week via Zoom as a sort of feedback on the project, and uh, they were I mean they were delighted with the social media coverage that we've been doing. Really thrilled. I think the six commissions are seem to be the one that was mm. just really pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And, and we also did it just delivered so much more than the original um, specs. Brilliant. Comments, questions, Steve? I, I think for me, I mean, when I popped in, and um, I think what's, what's very positive out, out of this was the memories that people have. And, and obviously, I mean, you say you're, you're 91 year old coming in with all of her memories of it, of Ramsgate. But it, I have to say that it did, it did um, I'm, I'm, it's a bit funny, really, but to, um, having lived here since 1970-something, early early 70s, so I've seen obviously seen the town change, like a lot of us have. Um, but I went to ride mm. in 1967, back a bit, when I was a, when I was a mere I was a mere boy. No, I was a, I was a very young teenager. And the thing about ride was that sticks in my mind. I actually went to see on Ride Pier on there Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch, oh. which goes back a long way. It's back a while. It does go back. But I'm, what I'm saying, it just linked the memories from here mm. to there. And, uh, and I haven't been back to the Isle of Wight since 1967, so maybe it's time I did. It's like allowing this space for people to have, to have those conversations. It was like going the um, Meridian Line. It matters people that I've one of yeah. So spraying it on the paper and sort of out yeah. and about in, in the streets. The amount of people that came from Greenwich, you wouldn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> the line actually went through the front garden of someone who used to live in Greenwich and now goes in Ramsgate and they've got another bloody version of like a yeah. <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah, so it, it, it does, I mean, obviously you can't sort of quantify and recall all those, those conversations, but certainly um, there was a, a, a strong connection. No, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. No, it's great. Just, just to say, I mean, is that, is that something then thinking about that, that you could, um, that could maybe be explored sometime in the future about um, a video of people's memories of the town here and uh, anybody who's connected with right and, and then getting that together and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just mm. I'm well, I mean, it's, 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 now. No, it is about, about bringing people together, which is it's, it's essentially why the Ridescape, it was a sort of, you know, stroke of not genius exactly, but no, it was a bloody good idea that it, it kind of brought people together. I mean, people like Daphne, our, our mayor, um, <laughs> uh, you know, she was a, a perfect example of this amazing kind of bringing together of those two cultures. And she came to Ramsgate because it reminded her of Ride. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, my instinct was right on that one. 
It's brilliant. It, it, it just it, it just really gelled. Yeah. Uh, and also, it just it, it did, as I said at the beginning, it took away that kind of spirit of competition because it was yes. picking out the best of both worlds and bringing people together in a sort of single project. And so what we'd quite like to do now is think about how those new networks can be, uh, be built upon to sort of promote both, uh, both places in a sort of meaningful and interesting and creative way. Particularly given we've got such, you know, such creative talent in both towns that we're yeah. really keen to... I did go out the hostess from, from the Overcraft once. I mean, once. I think we'll stop right there. I think we better. I <laughs> <laughs> question. Sorry, yes, please. I was, I, was I was interested in your comment about um, the creative um, space, community space, yeah. town centres. Um, and I'm just wondering how you are, have, or will feed that into TDC in particular. And the reason I ask about that is because we've got the levelling up fund, we've got this project, that project, there's, there's a number of things going on. One of the things that's coming out of it is something called a workspace, hopefully, I don't quite know where that's got to, but um, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I've been trying to push is social spaces. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, um, I wrote to Louise Askew many months ago, and I spoke to her last night, um, on that subject and it's something that I would like to push. When I was a teenager growing up in Ramsgate um, and a child growing up in Ramsgate, Saturday morning was at one of the three cinemas that we had. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there were three, I just can't remember what the third one was called. Um, but you know something, I, I don't know what it would look like, but pop-up cinemas, you know, it, it needs to be a modern version of, of what we had then. But I'd really like to push the whole concept of social spaces mm -hmm. in our towns. And I won't say she was enthusiastic, but she wasn't completely negative either. Um, I think, and there's scope for it. So I'd really like to see some kind of feedback that you're able to give. Well, we have quite a... Sorry, um, um, sorry yeah. We, we've got a, a fairly sort of structured uh, report framework to go back to historic England. Mm. And so at some stage we're going to have to sort of quantify what we've, what we've done so far. Uh, looking at sort of what, what, what struggles, and, I mean, you know, like trying to find the shop in a, in a town with so many empty shops, we didn't dream it would be the nightmare that it actually was. Um, so you know, those are the sort of issues that will come out, but um, also you know, our feelings about, yes, we've actually you know, met, met that need and, and mm. when, we get, when we take I, it. I think what I'm asking for is a targeted, rather I've than the, the, the feedback that you have to give to Historic England, mm. is there scope for a targeted comment to TDC, the relevant people, that actually oh. says this really came out? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I was talking to a chap earlier today who's got an idea for something that could be done in the town centre um, and has put in a proposal, so it's not just in the head at the moment um, but so yeah just can you do a mini little thing this is what we did yeah. this is what we found this is what people were saying to TDC there's a few things yeah. like that actually that I think could be really useful I think it's yeah. a really good thought yeah. in fact the, the future high streets fund we had the social space in it didn't we and Rebecca did a huge amount of work mm. on it and then when they cut the funding that mm. was the thing that went yeah and actually it's the as you've well, highlighted we, and, and your participants have highlighted we need to one things we that really that's need what the public are saying. absolutely mm. absolutely yeah I, I guess that's fine uh, can we maybe have a chat about that yeah fine afterwards yeah, that yeah I'm happy to uh, I'm away until uh, Tuesday if you want to contact me and have yes. a chat about it in more detail, then that, that's fine. Obviously, now's not the. That's great. Forum. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, David, you wanted. Yeah, I, mean, I just wanted to thank you for what you've done. It's brilliant. Here, here. Um, thank you. My question uh, Did you notice any difference between the two communities in their reaction to the project? Interestingly, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we did get a really enthusiastic response from. Um, the uh, craft packs from the Isle of Wight. They were really up for it. Um, so that was that was a, a distinct sort of that was a surprise. We I don't I don't think we we may be able to make a sort of report between you know how many went to different places and recorded that to a certain extent. But I mean obviously the HS has is so much further down the line in right than it is here. I mean uh, one of the uh, uh, things that I, I need to uh, consider is obviously the HS has project officer is is imminent here hopefully 
And, but, but they've been moving forward on projects there for a while, and they've actually started to deliver. And so they're so much further down the line than we are. And finding a place was just, you know, Rydart said, yeah, we've got space. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You really don't have to spend four months, like, you know, knocking your door. Um, and so, yes, they, they are, um, yes, further down the line and able to offer so much more. And we've, you know, it's a you know, real kind of open arms approach. Becky. Just two quick, quest, first question is, is there anything we can do to, to push the button? Because you're right, the one thing that I can't remember in TDC, any specific amount of money being allocated specifically for young person services or a young person's facility. I can't remember that in my time living here actually since 2010. So is that, what well, if we, if we if, obviously if, if Theresa shares a report with us, then can we Mm. But can we then push this with Louise Askew as, a, as, a, as, a, as our own little parish body? The, the other thing I'm asking is, is the Isle of Wight, is it a unitary authority? So it's a, it's how many it's layers? It has a county authority. I, I, don't have, I don't think it's. Yeah. I don't think it's unitary. I think it's. it's uh, yeah. I, th I definitely think it's much more. It's much more easier when you haven't got so many layers of. Uh, I mean, there is um, there is a wide town council. Town yeah. Town council. yeah. So yeah. Isle of Wight council. And, and we did have yeah. um, active so support and participation from the town clerk and ride town council as well. Mm. Mm. So again, we had you know quite. Mm. But I think the, the, the key thing about this is you've done this with people rather than doing it to people. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, was, I mean, we think about it. Some of the content and, and aspirations and, and sort of language of the HS has it's probably a bit dry for most teenagers. But the feedback we have from the art teacher at Broadstairs College was she's been trying for years to get them to go down the high street and look up and, and appreciate what they've got. Mm -hmm. He said, and this project actually did it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, that was one of those oh my god moments, you know, um, that you thought yes, and, and, and presenting. People with a, a really kind of kind of relaxed, accessible experience, something they could do, so they're not just sat there kind of you know waiting for someone to give them a. They could actually just sit there and sketch. They don't have to even sketch the models. Mm -hmm. They can do what they like. But it's just someone to sit, safety distance. It's very chilled, yeah. and they felt safe. So, you know, uh, and in many ways, obviously, teaching them about the high street is, is, is important, and, and all those other things. And that's sort of. That's sort of in, 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 endemic in the, the whole environment because mm -hmm. all the information is around you. Mm -hmm. but, um, cool. but they felt safe to, to sit. Yep. Was, I think really mm -hmm. valuable. I, I think, I think for, from my point of view, I came along right at the very end when you've got everything out and whatever, and it was part of that experience of starting to feel comfortable going out again and being in <coughs> indoor yeah. spaces and all of that, and that was partly about that really comfortable feel, welcoming feel of the whole thing. And it was fun as well. Brilliant. No, I mean, like the Absolutely. Tap, brilliant. The to half place. Yes, just, yes, it's great. People were just marvelling at it. Yeah, and I think there's all sorts of things that we can pick up on from this. Mm. Uh, uh, but I mean, ob yes. obviously, we have uh, the maps now out in Ride and Ramsgate, so uh, it might be worth having a discussion with Helen Spencer from Historic England as to how we move forward with what she intends to do with those maps. She intends to do with yeah. that. I mean, the five metres, and what, two and a half metres. Yeah. And so, you know. What else can be done? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we've got quite a bit of other stuff to get through, so can we ask, can we move straight on, Rebecca, can we move on to Active Ramsgate, please? Uh, yes, so um, Carol, the chair of Active Ramsgate, has uh, written this report um, with Sarah's so well, well done support as well. Um, and it basically just throws down some of the main things that we've been achieving with the Active Ramsgate project. Um, hopefully some of you at least have had a look at the new rebranded Visit Ramsgate website. So now it has a specific landing page for Active Ramsgate. And this is being developed working with um, Sleeping Giant Media, who have helped us with various aspects of it. The, 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 the copy was completely rewritten and um, all really it was rebranded. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. 
to, to reflect the new the new products as well. So um, we, the town council funded uh, a photographer, and that was delivered over three or four days. Um, and the photography on there really is amazing. So again, if you haven't had a chance to look yet, do take a look at it. Um, it, it looks at these 12 products that we're, we're offering or about to offer. One of them um, that we're still working on, and that's sort of the paint is the, is the triathlon, which I know one or two of you are keen to know about. Um, but you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take volunteers' names afterwards. <laughs> um, so there's been so there's been quite a lot of PR, obviously, um, particularly with the kite surfing championships. Right. And I know um, I remember last time council uh, councillors were quite interested in the um, advertising equivalent. equivalent Evaluation, which is kind of, it's actually not something that they work with now, it's not a calculation that's considered that accurate. But if we were to put a figure on the amount of media publicity that was gained just by four television, uh, ITV twice, BBC National, BBC as well as uh, local BBC, um, the conservative estimate, if we were to Pay for that amount of time on television is around £750,000. And then, of course, uh, Sarah managed to secure the um, Guardian journalist who had a fabulous time and wrote a marvellous article that was shared yes. numerous times um, on <coughs> social media, as well as obviously it was published in a national newspaper and online. Um, so that was really successful, just as we were all starting to come out of being hidden in our homes. So it was perfect timing, and it came out when we were about to launch the peer-to-peer -peer uh, trail as well, which uh, obviously helped with its success. Um, obviously, the kite surfing. The wind decided to go somewhere oh. else for two hot <laughs> yeah. days, That's probably for the first time. This year, yeah. and it returned rain, with a snigger on Monday yeah. morning, um, which was a great shame. But it did mean that we were able to promote the wing surfing, which is a mm. really, really new <coughs> sport, not even two years old, I don't think. Wind surfing, wing, wing, wing surfing, as in, as in you. Wing. Yes. <laughs> really good bit of planning, I think, that, that, that there were arrangements yes. for whatever the wind yes. did yes. this year, and that was a, 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 lot of, a lot of hard work. That was a lot of hard work, through, with yes. um, well Cheryl done. in particular and Sarah, um, trying to make sure that we had those strands, because we have had the wind do that to us before, and yes. um, ironically, um, it was with the town towers. Um, <laughs> the, the, so it was great that they had, but to be, to be fair, the kite surfers and all the participants and competitors just loved being here, loved being together because of that length of time apart. So yeah, and they used to weather playing a big part in their, their sport. So um, they had a lot of fun. And um, I can safely say that doing half road closure in half parade was also very successful, really, really well received. Um, I mentioned this in my town promotion, but I may as well say it here as well. It's, it, a lot of people came up to us individually, um, this was working as well, was working with me all weekend, and the comments were, we need, can we have more of this? Can this be a monthly thing? Et cetera, et cetera. So it may be something that we can look at. Um, Pre-lockdown, we were looking at doing a um, bookend of events, so having a sort of family fun bank holiday Monday, uh, the May bank holiday rather, ending with a more sort of festivaly type August bank holiday. So it's maybe something we to look at, um, and combining it with the with the kite surfing went went really really well. Do you want to come back to that, or shall we um, have a quick I'm, chat about that now, folks? We could talk about it. I mean, it's something that I probably need to put forward as a proposal. What, what, are, what are 
what are people's feelings about that? Just without without putting forward a proposal, but just any well, reaction? I, I to think. Yeah, I, I think um, you know it's, it's a you know it sounds a good thing, um, but I, th I do think we need a bit more meat on the bones. Yes, of course. I just wanted some initial reactions from. Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. I think I think you know any anything that that will bring in visitors and whatever is 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 a good thing. Yep. You know, we've got all sorts of things going on, and I think it's sort of like to see that there is some progression throughout the year here, reasons to come down here, um, things get a name for themselves, because it does take a while. I mean, you know, the Ramsgate Festival of Sounds is, what, it's the fourth, fifth year, I don't know, but yeah. people are coming to here for these sorts of things. Yep. Then it goes without saying that, that, that we should be doing all we, as, you know, we should as a, as a town council to sort of like assist in any way we can. Because we've got such an asset here, it's like it'd be dark not to use it. Yep. You know, hence the whole beach idea from David, which is still to get, you know, off the ground, unfortunately. But, but I think we really should be. Yeah. Okay. Things. Okay. So we'll ask you to have a, a, a closer look at that, Rebecca, and come back with something mm. more concrete. Yeah, may I just say sorry? Yeah, no, just sorry, Russian. Let's not forget the town centre as well. We really need to do something yeah. in the town centre because whenever something happening here, people forget about the town centre. It's dead. So the more, more, you know, the the seafront, all the cafes here and the military road, they are doing very well during the summer time. But in, in the, all the places in the town centre, they are not doing all that well. So I think we need more things in the town centre. Part of why we're yeah, yeah. 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 activities That's in Charlotte Court now. Yeah. So on, isn't it? And the idea of community. Yeah. Spaces yeah. within the town spaces, spaces, yeah. Yeah. spaces that, yeah. that yeah. control people. Yeah, indeed. David? We, we spend quite a bit of money in our terms on events. But up, up until now, it, it's, it's all been very reactive. We wait for somebody mm. to come forward with an idea. Uh, I've thought for a while that we should try to be a bit more strategic, picking up on... Um, Sean said, and, uh, and also what, what you were saying about having bookend events. Yes. And couldn't we say this is what we want to do, and then I invite somebody to come forward to, to arrange events? Yeah. Yeah. Around. I mean, if we only look at the Margate uh, Old Town, you know, they're doing so well there now. They have changed completely there. So we need something like that in the town centre. Thank you. I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think when I got newly elected, I made a proposal here about, about trying to do eight brocants on the back of Addington Street because we've developed a reputation. Obviously, I, I made, we made the decision to not run one this year. Yes. Two years ago today, it was, yes. wasn't it? I don't, my Facebook. I, I'm not sure when it was, but uh, we know that, that the Addington Street Revival Fair has driven uh, social, environmental and, and business on Addington Street. We've got three more shops have opened and there'll be more on their way. And I see the market as a key driver for that part of the, the town centre. And I believe between us, we actually have, with Janice's handmade, Rebecca's knowledge as the town promoter and my knowledge for, uh, as, as chair of the Addington Street Community Group, to have a damn good go at running eight fairs next year uh, eight brocants, seven of them in the town centre, finishing on September, where the last one goes back to Addington Street, yes. so that we don't lose that connection with Addington Street. Yes. I'm quite prepared to sit with whoever wants to try and work up a proposal and a costume, because the reason Addington Street works is because people come for a destination, not just to buy. They come to eat, they come to drink, they come to shop, and they also come to have some entertainment. So it would require some funding. But I can tell you the impact of the last Addington Street, the galley cafe told me that they'd had their best day ever. And they, they proved, they, they said it was on the back of people going to the revival fair and then coming, and working, coming down. And so did the Lookout Cafe. So we know we can pull people in. It might take us a couple of years to build, build it up because that's what happened with the revival fair. But I'm absolutely certain we have the knowledge and experience in this room and outside the room to put something on and make something quite special if the funding's there. So I'm quite prepared to lead on so that. You're willing to? I'm, I'm willing to do that maybe through the banker the, and anybody else? Maybe through the, the Ramsgate town team, so that we keep it sort of loosely linked to here. I, I would be involved. I would like. Uh, and and Roshan, yeah. 
I think it's yeah. a good idea to have some of that businesses yeah. um, yes. yeah. who can involve them come forward already. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Around the idea of events and entertainment. Yeah. Yes. And Maybe so you could involve some girls. Well. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Wonderful. Uh, Pat, you want to say something? Um, it was something <coughs> Steve said a while back about um, the way the bus comes into town. Mm -hmm. Now, if the bus was able to drop people at the top of the high street, do you remember saying yeah, this? Yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah, So they had to walk down the down. High street yeah. rather than indeed. go around and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, all the way around. Um, we need to, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Something yeah. from, yeah. like, we're talking a station. Yeah. You know, yeah. the station's quite a long way away from the town, it's so miles away. It, it needs to, we, we need mm. to have some kind of public transport from the station at least around and coming down mm. into the edge of the high street. I mean, it obviously comes to the harbour eventually. You got, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the loop, but yeah. Mm. But we need something yeah. like near the Argos area, yes. that, that corner, you know, yeah. Yeah. so people actually yeah. it yes. stops there and yes. has to come to the town centre. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how we go about doing anything about that. Contact stage coach. Try contact and stage coach. Thinking about yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Going up George Street in a yeah. bus is, is tricky. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's those sort of things that were going down Effingham Street are yeah. impossible mm -hmm. in an ordinary car, but there are potential for it down. You can only ask, can't you? Yeah. Wait, wait. yeah. Could I suggest that perhaps the businesses might might be prepared to support something like that. Yep. In what, what what way? Can... Well, if, if that's what the town needs in, in terms of encouraging footfall, it's the, it's the businesses in the town that, that would benefit. Yep. Um, well, effectively, sorry, David, effectively, you know, like, well, like a shuttle bus. I'm not talking yeah. about a, a, yeah, one yeah, of the, the big loop yeah, talking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why would they want us to do it when yeah. they do it themselves? Well, because business is yeah. up for it. Shall we? to go on Hardy Street because the yeah, it can go through the Hardy Street, then the Boundary Road, then come yeah. up the yeah, yeah. Yeah, Victoria Road that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it comes from Chatham House. Uh, sorry, Chat uh, Chatham Street. Chatham Street. High Street. Yeah. It stops right in the corner of that uh, NetWest Bank, isn't it? In the corner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there. Then go can go through the. To be brutal, it's case you see in TD. Yeah, it is case. Don't get the benefit. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Perhaps we can just we can pass this back to you to talk to business about yeah. Rebecca. Okay, we've sort of straddled now the active yes. landscape and the town promoter. So can you just I mean we'll assume yeah. that people have read the town promoter report, but do you just want to to pick out the recommendations and the highlights for us? Um, um, so just staying on the website, um, obviously from, there's been a lot of work done on that over the last few months, um, not just with uh, new copy and photos, but looking at search engine optimization and various tags and how we can collate data to, to see what's driving people to the site and, and so on. Um, but what we have noticed is because there's been a slight increase in um, page views that the free plugin cash caching plugin sorry that we had um, isn't cutting lasted so basically the last five days it's been quite sluggish it'll take six seven seconds to load sometimes which to a lot of people means when I'm bother so it's important that we um, <coughs> Make sure that the speeds are always sort of 99 to 100% um, to, to get that, to keep your audience. Um, so the, the next, from a free to the next um, plugin that is a purchasable one, which will allow up to 50,000 month, monthly page views, is between 15 and 20 pound a month. Um, which I'd like to recommend that we do to, in order for the website to. Right. To keep up. Makes perfect sense. Can we have a proposal for that, please? Yeah. David? Thank you. A seconder? Roshan? Uh, all in favour? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Relax, yeah. Okay. Please go ahead, Rebecca. That's brilliant. Um, 
Christmas light switch on, moving swiftly from the August back holiday. <laughs> uh, I applied for the Christmas light switch on this weekend. I know how to live. And um, uh, it was really just I had to register it to get in, in for the 14 week deadline. Um, obviously, last year we didn't have a proper switch on. We did uh, some virtual stuff with our mayor and a naughty elf um, and uh, a few other things. I'm not naughty. Um, but clearly, it's something that it looks like we'll be able to do to some degree. We'll certainly need to plan for having an event. Um, so, if I know there's been somebody set aside. Um, I'm not sure it'll be quite enough because I'm just trying to budget with what we've had before, but I will come back to um, our finance officer and discuss that further. Generally we make some money on the day that we put back in the pot anyway, so great. Right. Uh, the next month is healthy. I was going to say we've got Spare money in the events fund, haven't we? So it's one of the things we're going to come on to. David? Is the last Sunday in November the right day? Because I've noticed that increasingly other places do it earlier than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are still one of the earliest in the um, I, I think we still the earliest out of the main three towns. I might be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure we, we still the earliest. Um, obviously, Last time we did it, it fell on 24th or something like that, so it was like the earliest it could possibly be. So, and this one is all, almost one of the latest being the last Sunday of November. Um, I, I think it's kind of works, although you, every year you get people saying, I didn't know it was on, even when we did it on that day. But. When do you think people do their Christmas shopping? Because that's, that's what it's yeah, about, isn't it? Oh, well, I've done some of it. December in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Just say so I have. I mean, I also. We tend to do delayed money shopping events a week or two after, so they tend to sort of be the first week of December or coming into the second week. Um, but yeah. Anyway, you've done I haven't thought about doing it any earlier. <laughs> you've done it now, anyway. We have. I mean, it's something to think about next year. We'll see how it goes again, and we 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 <coughs> come <coughs> further about what it. What date it? It's always the last Sunday of, of November, and that okay. was on Tuesday. This this um this yeah, may I just come in. I. With the, uh, you know, the bank holiday weekend with the kite surfing and everything, I have uh, people who are talking to me about, you know, like everyone said that, you know, they haven't, they didn't know that, you know, the, all these events were taking place in the town centre or, you know, town. But I think what people are expecting, before we used to have like banners up, is it possible we can do something like that? I mean, for advertising. Because we used to have banners up, remember, uh, nearby the Peacock. Uh, and some one there and one sort of inside the town. Do, do you mean the tourist, in, the blue tourist information boards? No, no, no. The, the long banners goes up, you know, the, oh, but the Christmas right. lights are on, yeah, yeah. Across the street, with where the Christmas lights are? On the it's just on the, on, the, on the top, it, it went on the top. But we might have a solution for that coming up. But you always around. Got some, yeah. Some. I think because everybody then it is noticeable then you know although we are having lots of uh, flyers and posters here and there everywhere, but if the banners goes up few places in the town centre, I think it would be more noticeable. I think people are actually <coughs> saying that if if they could have that. Put money up, yeah. They were on the fence around the harbour. And sometimes you put it, yeah. All right. I think this is an item that we could build into. Build into something. The next one, uh, yes. yeah. whatever item it is. Yeah. I agree with you. There needs to be something visual. Yeah, there always used to be like that. It always used to be a banner up. If, if, if some of you maybe remember, uh, you know, or you always, uh, yeah. Sorry, yes. yeah. Yeah. Like carnival, before the carnival is to take place, before the uh, Christmas lights switch on, before the, you know, now we are having so many events in the town. Yeah. I think the banner should go up yep. the Ramsgate Town Council. Okay. Um, using the harbour railings is still an option, <coughs> yep. but they have to be much smaller now, so you're 
<coughs> panels have to be one metre width maximum point and 0.6 metre high as a maximum. Um, but they are still quite a good space to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to get permission if it's free. Yeah. And it can only be two weeks prior to an event. Yeah, I um, would enough. That, that is still an option for yeah. that. It's just a one page, very simple form to fill out. Yeah, yeah, I think. Okay. Well, Anything else you want to highlight particularly? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mentioned laying up fun, which, you know, it, we don't know for sure yet, but it looks positive. Um, the safety street funds. I think the planting, and I'm not sure whether it's a conversation because it might be too lengthy, but obviously, welcome back funding, safety streets funding, our own planting um, funds, and the town teams uh, funding for planters. Looking at that as a combined scheme. Um, might be a better option since all of the money, apart from the town council funding, has been a little late coming. And then, unfortunately, even though the town council funding was timely, what the nurseries had was this surge of people requesting, yeah. and then there was shortages of plants, so sedums, for example, which are very popular, they, people just couldn't get them. So. Yeah. Um, There'll be a sedum rush before we know it. I, I, I mean, I had a house in France, sold it, but the, 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 the local town, which was probably slightly bigger than Ramsgate, had, had, the Christmas decorations were wonderful. So, and basically, there was a slab of concrete that they made out of the bottom of some bin, and they'd go to a forest and, and chop some branches off a tree and then spray everything white. They, and these were on every street corner, and they just made a massive impact. So is there any way we could possibly look at doubling up some planters with sort of semi-Christmas decoration ideas. As they do in... They're aiming to do things on Addington Street to try and get some trees. Yeah. They do it in Covent Garden. They do... They have yeah. evergreens. Yeah. I remember discussing it with Morgan Harris years ago, but he said it's very expensive. So is there plant. any way we could look at put something that could double up so it could be replanted for the summer but have an impact over Christmas, over the festival? <coughs> it's worth discussing with Chris, obviously. He's... Um, very aware of what plants and mm. I mean we've looked at trees before um, something that David and I were sort of looking at and costs to 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 wrap you know to, to mm. pick out the trees branches and that which looks beautiful if it's done properly mm. it's really really expensive it's um, expensive as Trisha mentioned Morgan said you but, can't replant the existing planters you've got to get different ones because it's too labour intensive and potentially damaging to to the plants that are in there. So. Oh, right, okay. That was his. But I'm sure there's ways of doing it. So yep. it it's definitely worth exploring, yeah. isn't it? Yep. Um, okay. At Royal Harbour 200, we um, have promised Ralph that we will try to encourage all councillors to attend various of the events, haven't we? The yes, uh, we, similarly to the... Um, Quite step in the weekend, which of course the town council funded um, along with um, the majority of the Royal Harbour team event as well. Um, it would be good to be able to use uh, a couple of our technicians at least throughout, as we did for that, because their help. And I must say thank you to um, Chris Barton and Sean Big Pengilly because they were excellent, really excellent support over the uh, yeah, yeah. quite step weekend. And, it would be good to have that as well for if they're if they're willing um, for the for the Royal Harbour 200 event. Um, and yes, support from uh, council. Right. I know that would be really appreciated. Let's let's deal with those two things separately. Eileen, do you think it's feasible to, for us it's to ask for them to help? But we have paid time for kite surfing. We have to be careful with wages. Right. Um, so it would be something to look at. So I have to have a look at. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great, thank you. Can I just check the dates of the yeah. um, 200? Because I've got a feeling I'm away for the It's the last week. 24th, 10th. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm away for the whole yeah. week. If we, if we, the Saturday night, Jane and I are definitely going. If we send something out, do we send something around tomorrow, maybe? <coughs> I'll do that to, to remind people about the dates and yeah. the events that are on and encourage people to... I think it's important that... They possibly we can. I think it's important that we should all... As many people as effort as we can. Make an effort to go to the, the dinner and the, the drumhead service and whatever. I'd just like to... Because Rebecca's 
busy grazing the technicians and everything. Rebecca was out there herself. Here, here. Yeah. Um, manning the barricade Absolutely. for hours and hours and hours. Didn't have time to go for a wee, I heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's on public record. Which I thought was beyond the court. Yes, absolutely. No, well done, Rebecca. Well done. You have great Absolutely. We're extraordinarily lucky in our town for much. So, it's so fortunate to have you. Yeah. I, I, we, I'm there with Cozy. So you've already got me, but I don't know whether other people have felt the same. Okay, we've unlocked from lockdown, sort of. I still feel we've got personal responsibility to keep ourselves safe and other people safe. But I, 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 this is a personal comment. I went to, for an Indian last Friday and I felt as if I was doing something really bad. And then I came back and, and it was the kite surfing. And I, you know, I'm on Facebook. And for some reason, this information hasn't got into my brain. And I still think I'm in this state of not feeling comfortable about being out and being in large groups of people and with large groups of people where I can't really protect myself and they're not protecting themselves from me. So I think there is still a whole psychological thing going on with COVID, for, certainly for me, and I probably think like for a lot of other people. We'll have to yeah. sit into nightclubs, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't go. I've never, I've <laughs> Yes, the point. We need to, but we need to recognise that point. I think yes, you're quite right. You're quite right. There's quite a lot of people very anxious. Yes, and we need, we do need to recognise that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else, Rebecca? Um, question. Interesting. The hits on the maps. The two top hits on the, your maps. Yes. yes. Are retro shops. Yeah. They and. Are. Yeah. And our alternative shops, and that they're massive. The hits on those are massive, aren't they? They are. And, that, and that's sort of leading the way that this, this town is being seen. And I think we yes. need to encourage as much hold of that as we possibly can. Yeah. Petticoat Lane and all of that kind of stuff. I'm sure that comes down here. Consistently, yeah. and yes, we're drinking. And um, what's, I mean, I should have maybe mentioned a bit more about the maps because they've been really. They're really popular um, hits on, on, yeah. on the page, on the website. Um, and, and that's why I work with Sylvia Ross mm. on these, who you might know from Twitter as No Expert. Um, and she, and she, so she does a lot of food cooking. Um, and she, it, it's, it's you know, she looks like something that she does as a hobby almost, but she's, she's certainly an expert when it comes to maps. and, and uh, and there's some wonderful icons on now to really make them stand out from a, a sort of fairly um, utilitarian Google map. Mm. They've now got uh, little icons, that even sometimes the, a picture of the, the, the restaurant or the shop front. Um, and the public art trail um, that's, that's just been launched. Um, and. Uh, which is literally <laughs> just a few. Oh, not. It's only been up a few weeks and has already had 680 odd hits when I got this report last week. Brilliant. So, yeah, so the, the maps are great um, and a real asset to the, to the website and helps people find their helps way around. Helps people find their way around. And can we congratulate you as well on the. Van Gogh. Yes, and, and Tro, which is lovely. This sounds quite nice. Really and nice. Keith Ross, um, <laughs> uh, um, and from Critical Arts. He, he, I know, is Ramsgate Birds. He's an amazing ornithologist. He works for Spring Watch, BBC. Um, tours. But he's fabulous. also, yes, you've done his tour, haven't you? Yeah, his, uh, one of them. And so, it was brilliant. Um, and it was his sort of, working with him is always a joy. Um, we did take a lot of we transfers with this, but he was very patient. <laughs> and so I think on the 28th one, we sort of were happy, both happy with the, how it looked. Um, I did an interview with Academy of Hen this morning actually about that, so it will be on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, radio. Excellent. And we are sending one to Lunon uh, Library uh, because they're trying to build up their Ramsgate, Van Gogh Ramsgate profile. Oh, brilliant. Um, and hopefully the book, which is writing and an amazing job with um, will be produced by the end of the year and again will be 
we'll look at the funding that we've got through Ramsgate Society who funded this. Um, there's enough left to hopefully produce some really good quality hard back copies of Vincent in Ramsgate. Excellent. The bust is looking magnificent. It's lovely. It's got it's got bust high yellow flowers. Yellow flowers all around. Yeah. If you walk in that way, just pop in and have a look. It's looking stunning. I mentioned that in the interview actually. Cafe isn't. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, Rebecca, and thank you once again for all your hard work. Um, just moving quickly on to the town team item, which just relates really to what we were talking about. Um, we had been talking for a while as the town team about lamppost banners, as they have in many other places, and as we've started seeing um, uh, in Sandwich and other places recently. And um, uh, Becky had been talking to uh, Dennis. Dennis Smith about it, and came, he came up with a series of lovely designs that link with the Visit Ramsgate branding that we might oh, yeah, nice. use as lamppost banners. Colourful, really nice. Uh, colourful, highlighting some of our interesting features of the town. And uh, uh, that links as well with the, um, uh, with the active Ramsgate... Um, oh, can't yeah. the bit of paper now. The, oh, the, the flag. Um, flag poles and your visual stimulus. Basically, I went into you. I went into Sandwich around the time of the gold yeah, and saw the lamppost banners. Oh, lamp banners. And I've always uh, admired the ones at Hearn Hill. Hearn Hill. So I went to Dennis and said, "Look, Dennis, what we can do." Dennis is prepared to give all of his design time absolutely free. Uh, so we came up with Ramsgate and then we, we I said, uh, well, we came up with historic Ramsgate, eatery Ramsgate, and we just decided visit Ramsgate would be the best thing and a visual stimulus. So, and then uh, I've got a litter picking group. And so this is, this was a, a little idea produced by Kitty who litter picks, she's year eight, stage eight, up at, up at Richmond Road. And they wanted, the kids said they wanted a banner to tell people to keep their town clean. And I think once we've got the lamp lamppost banners up, and I'd like to see these actually out in the Newington Estate, out in Nethercourt, so it's not just about the town centre, it's about advertising what we've got on all our main entrances, really, and exits through. Uh, so we could have a, once we've got, we've identified lampposts, we obviously have to get cases the approval and buy the fixings, but we can keep creating a series of lamppost banners because our technicians can put them up and down. So kite surfing, a kite surfing banner goes up. Uh, Christmas opening, if we manage to get the market back up, a series of market banners go up. So it, it's a way of just visually trying to brand us as a town, really. That's why we've stuck with the Visit Ramsgate logo, because it's already there and it's why, why we create the wheel, but also brand us as a town and what, what not just the town, but the whole town, not just the town centre, so that we're trying to connect ourselves, the town centre, with Newington, with Nethercourt, with Cliffsend and Pegwell, because they're all parts of parts of our town, really. So, I mean, I'm totally pro them. And what will happen is, whatever ideas we have, Dennis will take them and produce the banner, yep. and we just get the banner. So that's the thinking behind it. Are, are people broadly in favour of the idea? Yeah. Anybody got any comments or reservations or whatever at this stage? I mean, we're not asking for money. We're just wanting <laughs> to be able to pursue this idea and bring it back to you. Only, only one comment, if I may. Um, you said about putting these up in Newington, Northwoods, or whatever. These are all very much beach sea focused. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we're looking at the upper slightly range. different. But People would just throw ideas at Dennis and he will come up with the banners. Yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah. it might be that... For, yeah. For, for, I'm thinking of Newington Estate in particular, which is yeah. very... In, in some way, quite interesting, because it's very self-contained. Um, and so I'm just wondering whether or not there might be something yeah. and, uh, that might focus yeah. into Newington more than just... Oh, my yes. yeah. I think it's about... I mean, I'd like to see the focus of Newington in the town centre to get us there. Two-thirds of Thanet kids have not been to the beach. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, David and sense. then Anne-Marie and then Steve. We're going to need... I'm, I'm, I'm in favour of it, but we, 
We're going to need a budget for it. Yes, exactly. Yes. This is just an exploratory so discussion. Need, so need to we need some plans. proper proposals that we can come back with um, to, to uh, this committee. Anne Marie. Two things actually. First of all, this which, uh, the designs are lovely and the dentist is excellent. I know that, I know, but um, these, are, these are brilliant. Um, we did this in Margate. I was um, chair of the Margate Old Town Action Group for uh, a while, and we were always having problems um, with banners because we wanted to put them up and the rest of it. So um, it was it was more to do with what would be sustainable in the high winds and everything. But it was done. But it was yeah. a, a bit of a fact. I'm not putting it down on it. I think it's great. We should do it, and they managed to do it in the end. But I, I do. But there are things we need to consider. It was. Um, it was the. Uh, Material, that's what I'm looking for, that was the, almost one of the hardest problems. Yep. The, they bleach very quickly and they Yeah, get and you've got to have something that's permeable with the wind, otherwise exactly. it's... So uh, sure yes. designing that yeah. to do that. Yeah. The second thing like is, with uh, regards to Newington, although I think things like this in Newington, it's a really good idea, because Newington needs to remember that they're also, you know, part of the landscape and this is their heritage too. But Cara Thorpe from Newington has been invited by myself to come give a presentation with regards to Newington. I've written to her twice now, I've not heard anything. Because I keep saying, you know, how can we help you? What can we do for you? Like, you know, what, what are you doing in Newington that we can get involved in and so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. So if anybody else has got any ins into Newington, I have as the chair written to her twice and copied her. Um, Newington Council is in and so on and so forth. I'm desperate to get her down so that she can explain to us what Newington's needs are, for, and, or Newington's projects are from her perspective rather than from our perspective. Um, but I've heard nothing back yet, so any, any help with that? I can just mention, uh, yeah. I've spoken to Cara today, oh, and uh, she says she wouldn't be able to come because she's so busy. Okay. There's all sorts been going on, but as from this weekend into next week, Things will be easier because while the school holidays have been on, they've divided the hall up, right. the sliding door type things. That side was where they did the food bank, food bank, and this side was where they had school children and parents. The chef was in, he was teaching, and, and they were helping him. Uh, teaching the kids to cook, and they were cooking a meal for everybody. Brilliant. And, Cara is involved in all these things, yes. so it does take up a lot of her time. Yeah. And sometimes she's the one designated to go to Ashford to uh, yeah. share. It's fine, it's just, and then that's, and, um, I sort of like know that she's really busy. In the morning, yeah. Yeah. she's about nine o'clock at night. Yeah. I, just like, I just like an email back from her, sort of like acknowledging that, because I think too that if, you know, the next time something comes up from Newington where they want money or something, which of course they're entitled to do, but it would be nice to, to um, create maybe a better communication yeah. link with them to see how we can have what else we need to do, because otherwise, if we don't start that dialogue, we're never going to get there. Well, we have uh, an apprentice who uh, goes to college and she's learning uh, office work, etc. But she's also the one who drives the van. Yes. When Kara's not taking it down to. She drives the van, she does the deliveries. So she's not there to help in the office. Yes. So Cara was saying that she has pages of emails to answer. Oh, yeah. Sure. And she hasn't even read half of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, That's ridiculous. But trying to get. Well, to now we're at the end of the school holidays, sure. Yeah, so we have a bit more time in the office. It will be opened up. Yeah. And it'll be easier then to yeah. work things round without having to yeah. be two places yeah. at once. So, it's excellent. What about if we moved one of our town, our, our town promotion events meetings to Newington and we all met at Newington so it made it easier for her to meet us and just carry on the meeting if they provided the space in the community hall. There'd be nothing to stop us if, if she was the presenter, nothing to stop us meeting there would there I don't think. Arlene, can you think of There's a, a, no reason why the council can't be in other premises Yeah. we Obviously we wouldn't be able to stream it. We'd, have, we'd lose all of that which we just benefiting from now but yes it might, might well be worth considering hello um, i mean pat is obviously a, um, a contact in with cara don't forget you yeah. oh i'm sorry steve i don't follow oh, 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 so sorry, steve. don't worry about it you can go after me <laughs> where you going? um i just wonder 
I just wonder whether no, I'm I'm only there's only any mileage in someone else going out with Pat. I mean, maybe I'm re rather than just sending an email and actually going out and. and Yes, it's certainly when when you're there, it's easier, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I've been there. Yeah. Twice. yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. And I can't find a way in, or there's everything's closed. And I thought, right, well, in the end, what day was it? Yeah. 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 But I don't yeah. know. This is ages yeah. though. But it needs it needs to be when it's open and when the car is going to be there. Yeah. It's like, like I know. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's a way to go back. I thought I'd go in there. On a Tuesday and a Thursday, because that's when they do the bags. Right. Yeah. Okay. But with somebody yeah. there. Yeah. As long as it's yeah. starting a dialogue and things are progressing. Yeah, getting something. Yeah. And yeah. on a Friday yeah. and yeah. a Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's when they put the leftover food in the foyer for people, for people to, to come and help themselves right. to. Right, right. Uh, can, can we quickly uh, move to Councillor Alban? Sorry, Councillor. Uh, very kind of you, Chair. <laughs> very kind of you. Uh, all, I, all I wanted to say, Chair, was on the expansion of in relation to the um, the photos and and the put the banners up that. and stuff, yep. stuff like that. Um, obviously, back in the day, there was always uh, railway stations in London were always uh, things for Ramsgate and Margate and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, is there a chance that we could look at that to get some of, to get those in St Pancras and Victoria? Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Remember that one? The, the money. I know. I know. I know I, I, it's just a yeah, thought. It's a good just, idea, yeah. You know. Yeah. Just out of the, obviously, it's going to cost a bit, but just worth the thought. That was all. Southeastern trains yeah. did it themselves, didn't they? The, the, the yeah. One yeah. of the harbour with. Yeah. Di Carlo, non se Ramsey, yeah. etc. Yeah. But um, I'm right. that's where Port Harbridge and people come in, isn't it? Because they really pushed for those banners to go into all the stations and the underground stations, the rest of it, and they did really well. So maybe as a council, then we need to be contacting Paul and, and the. Um, and the. You know, visit Planet. Is it Sanit? Is it Sanit? Yeah. Say, yeah. Well, okay, what, what are your plans at the moment, especially as things are beginning to open up? Maybe we need to find out what they're, they've got lined up. Yeah, because maybe they're doing something that know about it. So again, I think it's communication. Really. Yeah. Are you okay to pick that up, Rebecca? Yes. Thanks. Brilliant. Yes. Thank you. Does it can too? Yes. It can. Yes. Yeah. And I remember a couple, well, a few years ago now, they had some free spaces through South Eastern, um, and they all went to. Um, yeah, so the Marble, didn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because we did query, obviously, yeah. all three towns. Yeah. I know. The, I know it's bonkers, but I mean, I, I, I also I, French villages, French towns are very, are very. The tourist departments there are very open to receiving posters, uh, and they're just over there, and people will begin to come over. So yeah. why, why don't oh, stop and have a couple of days in Ramsgate? Yeah. Maybe you go elsewhere. We could get the kite <laughs> surface to take them over, <laughs> drop them off, and come back again. <laughs> Main tourist in places like Calais or further down, and just getting somebody who can speak French, obviously not me, to write a polite letter to say we'd like you to visit. Maybe do a French. Yeah, over there. That's a shame. Thanks. Wow, I don't know. After all, I think it's now. Asians. I might stop it. Okay, okay. Um, I think we better. Hello, hello. Are you listening in France? <laughs> Right, oh, I think we've, uh, we have we have discussed that one, um, and the, the, there's a little more on the town team report, which is mostly about rubbish as usual, uh -huh. which you can read at your leisure if you haven't already. Um, let's move on to the community ad item, Dean. Okay, so um, as you all know, the community ad goes out to 18,000 households. It doesn't go to every single household in Ramsgate, which, um, as I've heard from different councillors and also residents, has caused some feelings of neglect and upset see, with different different areas. Um, so a few years ago, I was sent a distribution map um, by Community Ad of where they delivered to, and that included uh, half of Newington, half of Northwood, and every other road in Nevercore. So the chair has asked me to ask for a new distribution map, which is on the back of that report, and everything highlighted in yellow is not delivered to. Now, they've been developing their distribution based on uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, the majority of Newington and parts of most Monte Fury on the level of pickup and when they return the next day, because most of it is found either in bins or driveways. So they, that's their logic behind it. Um, and obviously, for them, 
the ads going out need to be seen because it brings in revenue for them. Mm -hmm. So the chairs asked me to ask Unity Ads what it would cost to cover this gap. So if we were to pay to go to every single household. So because the Ramsgate Unity Ad magazine has been such a success and it's increased by 3,000 issues since we first started, Community ads are willing and happy to cover the cost of the first thousand. Mm -hmm. So we only need to print 3,750, so we would actually pay for 2,750 at a cost of 261.25. Mm -hmm. um, they've also advised me that the distribution team, they would need four distributors, uh, the driver for a day, that would be £465. So per issue, if you were to do it, it's £726.25. Um, and that over six issues in a year, that's £4,357.50. So in the grand scheme, it's not a vast amount if you wanted to reach all of the residents of Ramsgate. If the committee was to agree, what I would suggest is to agree in principle, because obviously we don't have the budget for it this year, and to defer that decision to November, the where the budget setting will be done. And then that would come into effect in the new financial year, which then would be issue 37 starting from May next year. Mm. So, committee to the side. How does that sound, Peter? I would probably support that, yeah. Chair. I second it. Yeah. 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 Everybody happy with that in yeah. principle? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that onto the agenda for the budget meeting. Perfect. David? If we did it, I'd like to think that there is some way of measuring how successful it is. Could you, you talk to them about that? Yeah, I'll definitely. give that some yep. thought. Yeah, I'll come back to I'm that one meeting. At this yeah, this is Prestige, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. it's up at the back of um, Prestige and the uh, because the thing is, Newton's. Yes. Four and a half k is probably one less event. Yeah, exactly. In terms exactly. Of that's, exactly. That's what yeah. you've got to think about. Yeah. But I mean, for every issue or something, we're saying about you know banners and everything, and that's especially important for people that don't live here. Um, but at least, if if the back page or something is your you know list of events throughout the year or the list of events coming up and so on and so forth, yeah. then you can knock that element on the head of reaching those far places that don't come into the town centre or don't see the back here. Yes. So the residents, there, and I think that's really important. So Indeed. You need to definitely need to go up. So why would you? Why would you? Um, why would you not? Uh, do it, yeah. not, not have some around it and have the rest around it. Yep. Just, you know, yep. it seems bizarre. Helen, yeah, just thinking, uh, picking up with what Dave was saying, and um, bearing in mind that they already know when stuff comes back and it's not being done. I think at the end of the first year, we definitely need some kind of feedback as to yep. Yep. Um, the level of. of impact we're having with yes. this, this funding because yes. we would need to decide whether or not it yeah. continued what? or whether or not within bearing in mind that this is sort of quite um, a particular ward whether or not there's something else we could be doing to promote the community ad magazine before it goes out mm. so you know how can we get into the community that actually then says there is this information here what can we do within that mm. ward mm -hmm. so mm. I, I don't know the answer I just know the question Right. So you'll give that some thought before the budget meeting, Dean. And yeah, I'll ask yeah. Us those questions have, to the community have a discussion on, on how we can get a response back of, about um, how we can measure how the impact. we can measure the impact. Yes. Yeah. 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 Pat, could I just say that uh, to get people more interested in the Ramsgate book is to do as Dean keeps asking people write something. Mm. Mm. Yes. You know, all councillors could write something. Yep. Not only in one go, but you know, you can have it in we could put it yeah, between us. <laughs> That's a really oh. good idea. That's a really good idea. We could divvy it up in such a way that you've got yes. You know, what, yes. Whatever they're doing. Yeah. Yes, you know, whatever you do. Yeah. Let's have a look at yes. Yeah. So yeah, the, the focus this month is on yes. Pat Moore, she's etc. Yeah. Yeah, that might be really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You said it. The, the prizes and came away with your arms. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, it's alphabetical. Okay, yes. I do mine anyway. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> not. That's not enough. <laughs> w to start. <laughs> no, but as far as I know, the community ad magazine is received very well with it presidents. Is, yes. I have people coming who lives around, you know, like the yes. town centre. 
uh, sometimes I have extra ones that I put it outside with our yes. venues and they come and collect them. And because they don't get it delivered all the time, yeah. sometimes in three months, you know, they will receive it and yes. three months they will not receive it. Right. So, um, uh, you know, Roshan, do you have some extra yes. I could have, you know? Yes. Um, it would probably be a good idea to put some in pubs. Yes. Um, exactly. I think they do. I mean, it's a spare one. Thing. Susie has a Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, our magazine and around it. Yeah. Not all the time. So I mean, yeah. again, I don't know what our budget is. Yeah. Here, but in terms of. Not in pubs, though. Want to know Why not? What, what is going on? They want that. They want well, if you ever, when Sally Armour used to come round to pubs, <laughs> you know, with the, with their. Yeah. Thingy, uh, well, never really. Uh, so, uh, we weren't planning on sending them round. Put them in the basket of cockles. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. Um, I'll do a, I'll do an article on skinny dipping on the Western Undercliff. The <laughs> <laughs> picture, yeah. Okay. Um, moving very swiftly. If you don't like. That brings us to the end of the. Uh, main agenda, and we're going to be moving on to events funding. Yep, so you need um, a so proposer we, and a seconder to remove the public. Yes. We need a proposer to remove the public. Thank you, Anne Marie. Chair, yeah, I must leave. I'm apologies. You must leave. leave. Right, okay. Very much. Right, need a second. Nice to see you. Very much, Councillor. Nice to see you. Nice. Nice. Um, a seconder about removing the public, please, Roshan. Thank you.